Hello and welcome back to Alex Makes Stuff. My name is Alex and today we are going to be recreating one of my oldest jewelry making projects. The pistol ring. So just a little background on this project. This is one of the first things I made in my freshman year jewelry class uh, back in college. And so it's not as uh, advanced as it probably could be. There's, you know, it's very straight edges. It was my first attempt at doing stuff like this, but I had a really good time. It's a ring, but it's also, you know, it kind of sends a message. You put it on your finger and, you know, you, you point fingers and it hurts people shooting, you know, that kind of thing. It's based off of a Colt 45, 1911, 45 ACP. Um, iron sights and everything are pretty close on to what the real one is, but I wanted to redo this. A friend of mine said she was interested in one, something like this. So I thought about making a newer version using some of my more advanced skills that I learned over the years and uh, make something pretty special. So here we go. So I don't have a big um, a big shear for slicing off even portions of the sterling silver that I have, but I did get these tin snips. I'm gonna see if I can't just do this by hand. It's a little nerve wracking. I've been putting in this off for a while because I didn't want to mess it up because you know silver is expensive, but I figured, you know, just jump into it, see what happens and uh, you know, I'll give it a shot. My calipers here to mark a line. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully I can see that while I'm cutting it. <laughs> it's pretty thick, so it's hard to chop, but we will get it done with muscle if need be. I didn't want to cut this with a saw because I figured it would take too long and the lines would be not as sharp as they could be. This is just a, basically giant scissors, so I figure I'll do the job right. Cut a few of these strips for the rings, and then I gotta cut a longer, thicker strip for the actual barrel part. Slow and steady wins the race. Huh! Not as slow or steady as I thought, but hey, look at that. I cut a thing. Hey, and it's not awful. Uh, it may not be perfectly straight all the way around, but sanding is a beautiful thing. Let's do that a few more times. Darn. All right, I've got my three main pieces cut up here. I'm just gonna flatten them out a little bit on this little jewelry, whatever the heck you call it, um, with a mallet, just to straighten them out since they're a little warped from the natural chopping. All right, I've got my pieces cut up here. These are gonna be the two rings, obviously front and back ring. Um, this is gonna be the top, and this is just gonna be for the iron sights and I guess any other little pieces I'll need, probably just the iron sights. I don't know why I would need anything else. I gotta kneel these pieces, so I'm gonna get some fire and start heating them up. We meet again, torch friend. So we're back at the trusty grill. Now the point of annealing is to heat up the metal so it becomes soft. So if you just hold the fire to it, like you just need one big lighter, hold it there, eventually the, the metal will become uh, weak and it will tell you everything it knows. My torch here, I'm gonna blast them and I'm gonna dunk them and they're gonna be soft. Just blast through the fire so you can see the flesh of the metal begins.
we are, nice and annealed. And just to show you guys what I'm talking about here. Now that's soft. There you go. Bendable with your fingers. Nothing to it. So this mandrel that I got doesn't really have anything to clamp it to the table. I don't want to mess it up by like actually clamping it to the table. So I'm just kind of like standing here holding it while also banging the metal on it to try to get the ring shape. And that's kind of working, but it's messing up my drawings here actually. You can see this or not, but. first time. There you go. Soft enough to push with your fingers, so I'm just gonna do that. Yeah. Get in there. I got the other one already. It's uh trying to get it to a seven and a half ring size. That's what my friend said she fits, so keep working at this one. Getting there. So I'm also without a jewelry bench, just want to point out. So, you know, instead of, cause I got to file these in order to solder them together. And uh, since filing silver shards onto the floor of my garage would absolutely destroy my soul and, you know, ruin any ability to repurpose that silver. I have this uh, little cardboard box. I put some wax paper inside of it. I'm probably gonna like clamp it to the underside of the table underneath my little, duty dad here and see if I can't file it all into here and eventually I'll repurpose all that silver and use it for something else hopefully. If you don't have a tool, make it. So I just thought this was kind of cool. As I was soldering, I put a little too much flux on this guy. I have to resolder it because it kind of joint got messed up. But look at all the crazy colors on this thing. You got blues, greens, red, orange. That's really awesome. So the friend that I'm making this for wanted something special engraved instead of the regular 45 ACP like I did in the first one. So I'm gonna engrave that now and uh, see how it turns out.
not perfectly straight, but not bad. So I'm going to try to get that uh, rounded shape out of this flat piece here by banging it on an old drumstick because it seemed like the right diameter for what I was going for. So let's give this a shot. This rubber mallet. A little softer. And that didn't work at all. That didn't work a little bit. Enjoy the next 10 seconds of me failing hardcore. So the regular drumstick wasn't working, so I cut this groove in this piece of wood, laid that puppy in there, and I hammered it on that way. I don't know why I didn't do this in the first place. I just didn't want to have to do any woodworking for this, but, you know, make a tool if you don't have it. All right, here we are. Pretty well rounded. It fits uh, the smaller of the two rings. Where'd it go? I've lost it. No, oh, there it is. So. pretty closely so solder that on there uh we gotta get the iron sights on everything first so we'll get that done but there you go round it over okay so i've got these little pieces here this one's going to be the front iron sight and these two are going to be the back iron sights I'm going to file these up square at the very least, and then I got to sand them to match the radius of the outside of the barrel, the top part of the ring. So uh, I'm going to do that now. Cut this one a little bit shorter. So I'm just gonna snip it. There you go. What are y'all doing? Get in there. There we go. Whew. 
gets hot in your fingers when they're so small. Careful not to burn yourself. There you go. There's those three little pieces squared up. I'm gonna do some creative filing and some sawing on them to make them look more like iron sights, and then I can solder them to the top of the ring. Using my little little half round file to cut this sort of, uh, if you can see in there, a little divot on that back end of the iron sight there. Doesn't have to be too deep, but I want it to be pronounced so you can actually, you know, see it. Got these little pieces ready to be soldered together onto the top part and the pickle. I'll sand off the clean, smooth surface from the pickling and then I'll solder them outside. Clean, clean, clean. Still have to re-solder this one, but we'll do. Success. So there they all are, soldered and cooled. I gotta put them all back in the pickle to clean them back up and we'll see what they look like. Time to get clean. So you wash it after the oh. so you wash it after the pickle, <laughs> and it looks so good. It's like it's like solid white. I love sterling silver. It looks so cool. No need to resolder this bad boy though. Looks like that iron sight's on there. Pretty straight, mostly straight. Pew pew pew. Just like that, we've got all our pieces. The bigger ring, the smaller ring, iron sights, stamps, and we got our back iron sight. Now I'm going to do some cutting, some grinding to make this look more like this one, obviously some filing and sawing to do and such, but then I'll solder that onto this top guy and I can solder it onto these two things. It's coming together. go. Initial cut's done. There's the shape. I gotta get that same circumference as the yes, outside of this guy. I think maybe I'll.
put some sandpaper on that drumstick and use that since that's the same circumference I used to make the circumference of the ring. So now we can see almost perfect. The solder should fill that nicely. That's pretty much that. I'm gonna try to get this one soldered quickly because it's ringing a little bit. I don't want it to ring while I'm soldering. It'll ruin the solder, wouldn't it? Definitely soldered from the back side. <clears throat> you can see it's all solid in the front. Just a little bit of a gap in there, so I think I'll probably clean this up and then re-solder the front with a medium solder instead of a hard solder so I don't remelt what I already done. Just to fill those gaps so it looks nicer. There we go. All right, so here we are after the pickling, after the soldering. Just a little bit to clean up, a little bit of crusty, dusty, but nothing too serious. I mean, a little bit on the inside too, you can kind of see. But mostly just polishing, and this bad boy is virtually done. I don't, my fingers don't really fit, but I'll see if I can squeeze my pinky in here. How about that? Uh, weird gun. How? Pistol ring. Pew, pew, pew.
apparently I'm tearing up this wheel. So one last thing, I had to, I don't know if you can see the discoloration there on top, right in that corner, but it's because probably I pickled it and then I had to file it down just that corner, hammer it in place and make it the right diameter for the front ring. So I might put it back in the pickle and then repolish it just so that I know all the surfaces are the same, because otherwise that might just be a different color for the rest of its life. And I don't want that, I want uniformity. So I'm gonna go back in, pay attention to every little detail. Back in the pickle. Plop. I'll leave it there for a little bit. All right, folks, one of the last things I'm gonna do here now that it's all polished up, so I'm gonna just carve my initials ADM into this, just so there's proof that I made this and nobody else did. I'm gonna carve that in there with my Dremel tool. Just a little signature in there, just so everybody knows. Here we go. I got this little bit. I'm almost gonna scrape it in there. First time trying to draw with that thing, almost looks like an O, but hey, Alexander Oglesmeyer, nice. Okay, so now on to a kind of fun part. I don't know if you guys have been looking forward to this. I've been dreading it, but also looking forward to it. We've got all this here silver dust. I don't know if you can see it all sparkly, twinkly. What we got, there you go, now you can see it. It's actually a lot of dust, and you don't want to throw this stuff out, obviously. It's silver. I don't know if you guys know anything about precious metals. I don't. But uh, <laughs> what I like to do, at least because uh, I spent a semester in Italy, I took a couple of jewelry classes in Italy. When we were in Italy, instead of using, like, soldering wire stuff like we have, we use here. You can see. This is, like, soldering wire. You clip it into little tiny pieces, and then you solder it. So I was doing soldering with. They actually just use silver dust, like silver. It probably was, like, solder stuff crushed up into dust but i thought it was kind of cool they kept it in these little guys i like to keep my cocaine in here just kidding this is salt uh, i keep salt just for like usually in my medical box for like sore throats and stuff but i'm gonna get rid of the salt and then i'm gonna fill it with the silver dust and i'll keep all my silver dust in this little guy so that when i'm ready to smelt it back down into ingots or whatever i want to use it for i have it somewhere safe so let's do that dumping the salt let's see if i can do this one hand Ugh. Child proof nothing. Boop. Goodbye, salt. I don't think I don't think salt any minute salt particles will have any negative effect on the silver particles, but I guess we'll find out. Where are you going? Get back up here. Alright, so I'll give this a shot. I'm trying to just scoop it on there basically. Sandpaper here. I'm brush it over. A lot of really fine silver dust. I guess I can't brush with the paper. So what I think I will do. Usually I have like a knife on me, something sharp, not for slicing and dicing, but for scraping. Too many tools in my tool chest. Too many tools. Oh, I swear to God. I don't think so. There she be. Ta -da. My knife for scraping. Let's get back to it. Here. Not scraping from here. What I'm going to do, so you can see. My finger, you can see that, is covered in dust. I'm literally just gonna scrape it. 
into my little cup here. It's great. There you go. Now you can see a little bit of Dusty McDust in there. Let's keep him going. A lot of this might actually be like sandpaper dust as well because I did try to scrape as much of the sanded stuff from the sandpaper into here as well because I want to be as conservative as possible. It's such a precious metal. But when you mix it with flux and do all the melting back down to make ingots out of your dust later, much later, I'm not going to do it in this video, um, the flux and everything which is what like helps you clean metal when you're trying to either fuse metal together or melt it and stuff. Um, should do a fine job of sorting all that gunk out, impurities and such, so no worries there. And yeah, because other, like, otherwise this stuff would not be as dark, I don't think. Silver's not really this dark. Silver, contrary to popular belief, is silver. Not gray. So that's pretty much that. Let's delicately try to deposit this into here. Oop. Okay, that's most of that. We still have some dust on this paper. Just gonna do a quick little wipe down my finger and scrape it off my finger like I did before. This worked out pretty well. I didn't think this uh, cardboard and whoa, look at that. You can't see it, but it's there. Just kind of blew it. It was all on my fingers, nice and clean, ready to be scraped off, and then. Blew it. Oh well. Looks like we can do it to another piece of wax paper. The rest of that's just dust, I'm not worried about. There's all of this stuff though. So now, all of that silver dust is in there. A couple little chunks of silver in there too, kind of too small to do anything with. I'll leave them in there because I don't want to put it back in like the actual box that I got all the other silver in, which is right here. My other leftover silver is still in the box that was mailed it to. I only use like one quarter of what. I still got some of this left over, but the little pieces I'll leave in there with dust. And if I need like a tiny, tiny piece of silver, I'll just grab it out of this little guy. But that'll be my container. So there we go. Clean. Well, that's pretty much it for this project, guys. Thank you so much for watching. At the time of recording this video, I've actually already mailed out the ring to my patrons, so I won't have any photo shoot stuff here. But you can check out my Instagram. I'll post a link to it right here so you can check that out. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and a comment below. If you're interested in something like this, feel free to leave me a DM. I love making stuff and I had a really good time making these videos, so I'm trying to do a lot more of this stuff in the future. Um, so keep you posted, but until next time.